Oh, you don't ever do anything. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to go over. Oh, shoot. I forgot. Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter, go downstairs and tell the lady in front of this that you need two batteries. Batteries? Please do that. <laughs> batteries. Y'all know what a battery is? Batteries. Tell her you need a battery because she don't understand. The other. She just said battery. battery. Yeah. Battery. How do you spell battery? It's B-A-T-T-R-Y. Battery. battery. I'm sorry. Battery. I'm from Bell Time. Yeah, he is very mean. No, I'm not mean. People just weird. And I'm not. Alright. Now, let's talk. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. It's not going to affect y'all really, but I am teaching. Uh, if you need another math, I would probably suggest I'm teaching this one, Math 110, which is not a difficult subject. I mean, a lot of my students do good in it, so that's the only one. That's the online class that I'm teaching. But. Unless you want to take the 155, but y'all really don't need the 155. So, but that's summer classes. I show all my students in case yeah. they need a class to fill in. You could take the 110 as a elective or a science or a math in your, you know, whatever. I'm not teaching the 103. I usually teach the 103, but they don't have it. They don't. They're not offering it, as far as I know of. They might be offering it online. Um, That's well, the 120 you're taking now. Polycom means that I teach it from the one AC 137 downstairs and it broadcasts out to uh, she looks like it, she's a hustler. Um, it, it broadcasts out to the Easley campus, Oconee campus, and Pendleton campus. Oh, but you actually I teach from here, yeah. In other words, it's got a 3D camera in each classroom. Mr. Porter's in one. Did I say Porter again? I don't know why I do that. You ever have? You ever meet somebody and you and you swear their name should be something else? So he's Mr. Porter. Okay. What? Yeah, she. Yeah, she gets. She bringing that bottle in. You know, that's that's one that. That's what that's what alcoholics do. They, they cover it up. That's why she's got that bottle right there. She's got the hard stuff in that bottle. It's water. Yeah. Mm hmm. Thing old crick water. Yeah, moonshine. All right. So write that down, and if you need one, that's what I'm teaching this summer. I might be teaching another one because somebody may flake out, and I may have to teach another online, but. Those are the only two offered at the Anderson and other campuses. So anyway. All right. Now, 8.1. Somebody look at your outline. I know we got to do 8.1 and 8.2. I really don't like to do 8.1 and 8.2 because I really think we need to get to chapter 9. We have to have 8.1. Yeah. Why can't we do it with 9? I don't want to, because it really don't have anything to do with nine. Okay, nine and ten. That's, that's what we really need to get into. Okay, but the, what I'm going to show you with 8.1 and 8.2 is two or three things. One, I don't want you to do the homework. Don't do the homework yet. Okay? Because I'm going to go through. Well, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Um, I do want to show you that p hat is equal to x over n, and q hat is the complement of p hat. Okay, p hat is the basically a proportion. Okay. And x, now p hat can be given as a <clears throat> fraction, it can be given as a decimal, or it be, can be given as a, a sentence form, okay? And I'll give you an example here in just a minute. Now, 8.1 and 8.2 problems are a continuation of 7.2. 
but I don't use a lot of them. 8.1 and 8.2 is a continuation of 7.2 problems. But I don't do all of the things that they do in 8.1 and 8.2 because to me it's not necessary for chapter 9 and 10. Okay? So what I do is I just go through and I pick out some problems and I'll do one today because I'm going to get to chapter 9 as soon as we can. But I'm only going to do one example today and then I'll make up another. I'm just going to make you a 8.1, 8.2 homework and just get rid of the 8.1. I'm just going to call it 8.1 and 8.2 homework, and I'm just going to delete those two because I don't want I don't want you doing those. Okay. So anyway, it's a continuation of 7.2, and I'm going to give you an example here in just a minute. And I also want to give you one more formula, and that is the z-score of n. In other words, in 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 in, that, in 8.1 and 8.2, they give you a problem like 7.2, and then they give you another sentence added on to that question, and it says, what if you pick 10 pennies, or whatever the case may be? That 10 is the N, okay? So it changes, and that's going to be X minus X bar over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And this is the part right here, this mu, in 8.1 and 8.2. Okay, that's the part that's mu. So I don't want to spend two sections when all the only thing that's mu is that one little thing. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to, I guess, bombards you with information when the only information that's really important is this right here. Okay? So, let's do an example. And I'm just going to be very ad up on this example if I can remember it from this morning. Uh, pennies after 1982 way A mean, that's supposed to be weight. Let me fix that. Weights, I'll just do weights. With a mean of 2.4 and a standard deviation of 0 0.02, and that's supposed to be 2.44. Okay, and they ask you, and the 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 seven point or the eight point, sorry, the seven point two question would be find the probability. Find the probability of weights at least. Uh, 2.7. And I think these are grams. Okay, so this is 7.2. So I want y'all to do that. First of all, draw a picture. You find in the area under the curve. So I draw a picture. The mean. The standard deviation, two to the right, two to the left. Don't forget your zero, one, and two, and negative one, negative two. Don't forget all that. Okay, so that's the mean. Okay, Give y'all a couple of minutes.
Okay, so we got a zero, one, two, negative one, negative two, and that's going to be 2.44. That's going to be 2.46, 2.48. 2.42 and 2.4. Everybody with me? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the empirical rule. 2.7. 2.7 is going to be way the heck where? Out, Out here. So 2.48, let's say that's going to be 2.5. Let's see, let's just keep going. Let's just 2.48, 2.50. 2.52 and so on. Everybody with me? Yes. So we're just going to put 2.7 out here. Okay. Now we've already got a, we've already got that, so we got to do a z score. So it's going to be way the heck out there. So it's going to be like 0 0.000001 or something like that. So I'm not going to write down what it's going to be because there's no way I can figure that because you're talking about very, very small out there. So we're going to go ahead and do 2.7 minus 2.44 divided by 0 0.02. And that's going to be our z-score. That's our regular z-score because we don't have anything that says not as it's just saying z. Or, or z at 2.7. You can put a 2.7 right here. Okay. And what does that come out to be? Give me two dec uh, two dec or give me two decimal points. It's going to be three. Uh, what? This is three. It's going to be like five point something. What is it? Thirteen point what? No, thirteen. Thirteen even. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So do your normal PD or what is it? Normal CDF. Normal. CDF, what does that least mean? That means the lowest number is 2. Point what? Seven. Seven. So that means everything to the what? Right. Right. So well, this is going to be very small. So that's going to be 13, comma, 9999. What do you get? It's going to be very small. Yeah. What is the, it's going to give you scientific notation probably. Yeah. What is it? 6.34 times 10 to the negative 39. 39. It's going to be good. It's like it's going to be 38 zeros out here. Okay? Now, let's do another one. Let's do one that's easier to see. Let's do one right in here. Let's do 2.45. Give me the z-score at 2.45. And then give me the area to the right of 2.45. So that's going to be, okay, 2.45 minus 2.44 divided by 0 0.02. 0 0.5 even, 0 0.50. So now we're going to take our handy dandy normal CDF and put 0.5 to comma 9999. Somebody give me that one. Four digits, please. Okay, so let's let's hang with this one because it's easier to understand. Okay? Everybody got 3085? That's a 7.2 question. Does everybody recognize that as a 7.2 question? All right. Now, what I will test you on, on 8.1 and 8.2, and what I will give you homework questions on is one like this, and then it will have a second part to it. The second part will say, and I'll just erase this, this calculation right here. I'll erase this, and I'll put the second part in blue. I don't like to write in red. So, second part, I'm going to put 8.1 slash 8.2, circle it, and I'm going to put B. What? is the probability of a random sample of 
of 10 coins, 10 pennies, whatever, being ing above 2.45. It's going to use the same right here. Okay? Now, always remember that when you are adding that second sentence and you're saying, what is the probability of picking 10 coins that are above 10.45? Your area is always going to be smaller than your area before. Because now you're talking within those, within that area you just got the 7.2 question, you're going to be picking from that. So it's going to be smaller. It's not going to be bigger. It's kind of like you can't get blood out of what? Turn. And you can't put 10 gallons of water in a 5 gallon bucket. Alright? So your probability, if your probability right here is point 30, 31%, is the probability of getting 10 coins going to be 52%? No. It's going to be less than 31%. You with me? So make sure you make a mental note of that or put it in your notes. Put a note and highlight it. Your 8.2 percentage will always be lower than your 7.2 percentage because that's the way mathematics works because you can't put five gallons of water in a two gallon bucket. Okay? So how do we do it? Well, we take that, that new formula I gave you and I'm going to put Z sub 10. Z sub 10 means I'm going to now put 10 in the formula and take the square root of it. So I'm going to take X minus X bar over standard deviation divided by the square root of 10. Now fill in all the numbers, just like before. Except now, you're not going to divide by 0 0.05. You're going to divide by 0 0.05 divided by some small decimal or something, some small number. The square root of 10 is, let's say the square root of 9 is 3, so let's say 3.1. So 0 0.05 divided by 3.1. So I'm going to plug and chug. And I'm going to get 2.45. Minus 2.4 over 0 0.05 divided by 3.1. Go ahead and do 0 0.05 divided by 3.1. That's going to give us up here two dollars and forty-five cent. Is this supposed to be a four? Isn't it? Yeah. That's one cent, right? So 0 0.01 divided by what's 0 0.05 divided by 3.1? Is it 0.02? I'm sorry. What's 0 0.02 divided by 3.1? Should be a very, very small number. Point zero zero six five. Is it two zeros in the six? Everybody check it. I heard one person give me a number. Huh? That's that's what I got. Okay, thank you. All right, now somebody take 0 0.01 and divide it by 0 0.006. Is it going to be greater than 0.5? Yes. It's going to be up in here somewhere. What is it? 1.66. 1. 1.67. Yeah. See, 1.67 is going to be where? Right in here. This is 1.67 z-score. z sub 10 equals 1.67. And 1.67 is going to give you a smaller area than what you got a while ago. So the area we got with 7.2 question was 0.31, 0 0.31 or 31%. Somebody go from 1.67 to 9999, tell me what you get. Normal CBF. Give me four digits. Uh, 0 
Give me a second on that. Everybody got a second on it? that? I guess. Okay. So point zero four. So we went from a thirty one percent chance to a what? A five percent chance because I added another sentence onto it that said, "What is the probability of picking ten coins? What is the probability of picking twenty five coins? What is the probability of picking six coins? You that six, you're gonna take the square root of it down there where it says ten. You're gonna take the square root of six. You're gonna take the square root of twenty five, and it's gonna make the fraction." smaller, it's going to make the denominator smaller than the numerator, which will give you a bigger number than right here. It's going to give you a bigger z-score. And a bigger, a bigger z-score means that you're going to have a smaller area. Okay, so that's what I want you to learn today, okay? Uh, not just today, I want to go into chapter 9. But 8.1 and 8.2, as far as questions, I'm going to try to find three or four questions that does this. And that's all I'm going to give you for 8.1 and 8.2. I'm not going to make you go through all that. So if y'all see the slides, they're awful. Yes? I'm kind of confused on where did you get 3.1 and 8.2? Okay. Uh -huh. I'm looking. 3.1, where's 3.1? I was thinking it should be 3.2. Okay, I did it in my head. I'm sorry. What is the square root of 10? 3.162. 3.162. Let's go with 3.16. How about that? Or 3.2. Whoever said 3.2. I did 3.1 because what's the square root of 9? Three. So the square root of 10 would be 3.1. I just did it in my head. I am so sorry. I know, that sucks. I, I just wanted to know where, where we... That's fine. Yeah, 3.1 square root 10. Let me see if I can find one that's decent in 8.1 homework so y'all can have another one. But because my writing is terrible, I'd rather pull a question out of the homework so y'all would have one. But please don't do the homework yet. I want to... I don't even know if I've assigned it. Have I assigned it? Can you get into 8.1 and 8.2? You can? Oh, crap. Somebody's going to mess it up. Don't do 8.1 and 8.2 homework, please. Let me just go in here right quick and just... I'll just take care of that right now. Eight point one, eight point two. There, now you can't do it. I don't know if I can get in it now. Let me see if I can get in it. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, I'll just go here to, y'all see chapter contents, there it is, eight point, I can't remember if it's eight point one or eight point two, let me see if I can find a problem for you. Okay, here we go. I think this is one. It says, the reading speed of a second grade student in a large city is approximately normal with a mean of 90 and a standard deviation of 10. What is the probability of a randomly selected student will read more than 95 words per minute? Is that a seven question or an eight question? Seven. It's not eight, so it's seven. Eight would say, what is the probability of picking? It's going to ask you another. So this is a chapter seven question, so do that. One. It says, what is the probability that a randomly selected student, a randomly selected student, 
In chapter 8, it's going to say 10 randomly selected students or 8 randomly selected students. So draw a picture and do the chapter 7 work. I was watching Moonshiners last night. 300 gallons of moonshine is like how much do they get? $15,000 or something like that. No sneezing in class. This is what drives me crazy. Anyone out there in Facebook land know anything about well pumps? Call the daggum well people. That irritates me to death. Google well pumps around me or near me. No. Well, get on there and ask stupid questions on Facebook. Does anybody know how long I'm supposed to boil an egg? I mean, how many how many how many recipes can you find on Google? I mean, how many people work on wells in Anderson County or? I mean. That's why you have Google. I mean, <laughs> how was your chicken? It was good. Leave me alone. I was, I'm cooking tonight. I'm cooking. I'm cooking cauliflower tots with what? Well, what is tater tots? Okay, let's use a little bit of critical thinking here. Tater tots are these little balls of taters. Okay, then what is cauliflower talk? Little? Well, you need to Google it. It's called cauliflower talk. What else are you having? What else are you having? It's a Mexican, there's a Mexican, you take the Mexican gloop and you put it on top of the, yeah. What's gloop? The, the hamburger and the cheese well, and the jalapenos and, and huh? Hey. Cheese and jalapenos. Like yes, whatever. It's, you put that on top of it and you eat it. Okay. Hey, let me know how that is. I saw the recipe for that and I was going to try. Did you? Why don't you get on Facebook and say, <laughs> how do you make this? God, this drives me crazy. Okay, I'll send you a message. No, no, don't. No. <laughs> I had to do the I had to process the cauliflower before I left. I thought I had it all over them. I wanted to check because it went all over the place. I forgot to put the cover on it. I bet you crack your arms up. Oh I do, all the time. Alright, so here we go. Let me take the handy dandy whiteboard and we're going to do the chapter seven work, which is real simple.
90, 100, 110, 80, and 70. All right, I'm not worried about parts A through Z. I'm not worried through that. I just want to do two things. I want to find the, the first one and the second one. That's why I got to go back and pick some, <coughs> some questions that don't have 15 parts to it. All right, it says 95 or better. So 95 is going to be between 90 and 100. So we know with the empirical rule that that's going to be 2.5, 13.5, and what's half of 34? 17? Yeah. 17, 13.5, that's what, 30.5? 30.5, and that'd be 33. Somebody check my math. Add those up. Yes. Okay, so that's going to be 33% or 0 0.3300. All right, now let's go ahead and change. 95 into a 95 minus 90 over 10, which is going to be 5 over 10. Please don't use a calculator, which would be 0.5. Because you move the decimal one place to the left. Please don't use a calculator, because that's insulting. Because that means that you're... 0.5 comma... 9999. And somebody give me the area. Four digits. 0 0.3085. 0 0.3085. And I said 33%. Okay, because I just did the guesstimation. So 31% versus 32, 33%. Now, that's chapter seven. Everybody good? That's what you've been doing for the last couple of weeks. So now I'm going to hit point. Point three zero eight five. Enter, and that should be. I'm not going to end. This is okay. This is where if a hundred people, if a hundred different students, what's one hundred times three point three zero eight five? That'd be. Is it one around? Be point thirty one percent. What does it say? Does it say round? Yeah, it always does. So I'm gonna say thirty one percent. Do they want point three one or I guess they will I'm gonna say thirty one. Okay, let's see. Would expect thirty one people to read more. I'm looking. Would expect not exactly. I'm gonna say more. Okay. And I just multiplied 100 times 0.3 and I just moved the decimal two places to the right, which would be 31. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is chapter 8. What does it say? What is the probability that a random sample of 14, when you see a random sample of, that means you're doing chapter 8. So go ahead and do that. Use your new formula, and you're going to have to take the square root of 14. So I'll put it up here. We'll do it in red. No, let's do it in green. So over here, that's part A. Part B is right here. Or, yeah, part B. And I'm going to say my new Z of 14 is equal to 95 minus 90 over 10 divided by the square root of 14. So that's going to be 95 minus 90 divided by 10 divided by, well, the square root of 16 is what? Four. So I'm just going to go over here, and I'm just going to use a little bit of Noggin, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. What's between 3 and 4? 3.5. What's between 9 and 16? 12.5. We need what? Square root of 14. So I'm going to go one. What's halfway between 12 and 16? 14. It's a miracle. 
three point seven five. So I'm gonna say three point eight. Somebody tell me what the square root of fourteen is. Three point seven four. Y'all said that like three point seven four, not three point eight. Okay, three point seven four. All right, so now we've got five divided by what's ten divided by three point seven four? Two what? Two point six seven. And divide two five divided by two point six seven. One point eight seven. Now one point eight seven. Here's zero. Here's one. Here's two. One point eight seven is going to be in here. So it's going to be very big or very small. Very small. So one point eight seven, comma. 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Somebody give me that. Four digits, please. Point zero three zero seven. So three percent. You got a three percent chance. <coughs> That's the question I'll ask you on the test. This question right here. And we'll do some more after I make the homework. I ain't gonna do it right now. We're gonna do it. I'll do it sometime today or tomorrow. Everybody understand? Yeah. So we would type in point three, uh, point zero three zero seven. And they'll probably ask the other question, what if, yeah, there it is right there, but I can't read it, interpret. If 100 students sample blah, 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 uh, where is more? more than 95. What is 100 <laughs> times 0 .0307? Move the decimal places two places to the right. It's 3.07. So how many students? Three. Four over ratio. Now what are they asking for? 28. So do 28. I'm going to do it somewhere. If I find a spot, we'll do it in another color. I don't want to do it in magenta. Is it 28? Yes, 28. So we're going to do, I'm going to erase this up here. So we're getting three problems out of this one. Chapter 7 and two chapter 8s. So this is part C. Is it to the right? <laughs> Z, uh, Z sub 28. Is that going to be larger or smaller? Well, that's probably going to be smaller. Because uh, what was three percent was ten, was fourteen, so if you go larger, it's probably going to be a smaller area, right? So let's see what happens. Ninety. What is it? Ninety minus ninety-five. Ninety-five minus ninety. Ninety-five minus ninety. Over parentheses, and I always put parentheses around it so y'all don't screw it up. All right, which is going to be ten divided by the square root of 28. Well, the square root of 25 is what? Five. So I'm going to say 5.2. What is the square root of 28? 5.3. Don't just say that so objectively. 5 over 10 divided by 5 point what? 3? Somebody divide 10 divided by 5.3. Say again? 1.89 divide 5 by 1.89. 2.65. So let's put 2.65 on here. 0, 1, 2. Whoo! It's going to be even smaller, isn't it? That's 2.65 right there. So somebody do 2.65, comma, 9999. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so zero percent. So they're going to ask you, what if, what is the problem? 
one foot point, and then they're going to ask you, if a hundred, if a hundred different samples, you're going to say zero students. Because you can't have point four of a boy, four over ratio. What's that going to be? That's going to be point zero zero four zero. Everybody got it? Everybody feel good? Point zero zero four zero. And they're going to say, what if you have 100 samples? You're going to say zero students are above. Where is above more than? So you're going to put zero right here in the middle. And check. And, that, and they're going to probably ask you another second or third one. I'm not going to. And they're going to ask you about the, about the, about the uh, area. What happens to the area as Z increases? It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. What happens? What if Z increases? That means the standard deviation is decreasing because you're dividing by what? A bigger number. Okay. What was the? What were you dividing by with 14? You were dividing by 3.74, right? What were you dividing by with 28? So as the standard deviation decreases. Okay, as, as the number of samples increase, the standard deviation is going to be decreased, which means that your area is going to get bigger. I'm sorry, smaller, sorry. As the, as, the, as, the, as the denominator increases, your area is going to decrease. That's what they're trying to get you to understand right there. But I don't care about that. Okay, I just want you to be able to do the math on these three problems we just did, okay? That's eight, all right? I'll assign the homework later. You don't have to worry about it this weekend, or you might have to worry about Saturday or Sunday. I don't know if I can get it done then or not. Okay? Now let's go to nine. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint, and let me look what time it is before you all go into convulsions. Okay, we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Chapter 9. Now, what are we doing in Chapter 9? Chapter 9 and Chapter 10 is basically combining everything we've done in the first three units. Let me explain that because it's kind of important. Okay? In the first unit, we learned what? Unit 1, we learned how to deal with what? Stats. We learned how to do test scores, how to find the average and the mean and the median and the mode. We also found how to do a probability, I uh, mean a uh, frequency distribution. Uh, 5 to 10, there's 11, 11 to 14, there's 12, 15 to 20, there's 13, and then we found the mean and the, and the standard deviation there, remember? Okay, so in chapter, in unit one, we found how to find the standard deviation and the mean, and those were the two important numbers. In unit two, what did we learn? We learned probability. And we learned that probability was assigning a number from zero to one on a prediction based on the what? Based on the statistics, based on the math, based on whatever you calculate. Everybody with me? In unit three, we talked about a binomial distribution or a frequency distribution and how you can find the mean and the what? Standard deviation of not only statistics, but probability distribution. Okay, so finding the mean and the standard deviation of a probability distribution. Everybody see? Okay, and unit four, we're taking all of this and we're crunching it up in a ball and we're going to do unit four, which unit four is, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Unit four is being able to establish a competence interval, a competence level, 
a margin of error, and n is equal to how many people to survey. Because we want to be able, when we get through with unit four, we want to be able to use the sample to predict the what? The population. Good. With population. With a 90 to 99 percent confidence level. Now why? Now I've told y'all, none of you are supposed to walk out of this classroom being a statistician. Okay? All right? None of you are going to walk out of this room and start lecturing people on static, uh, statistics. Okay? <laughs> then why do you take this class? Well, as the old saying goes, if you keep your mouth shut, you won't sound what? It won't sound dumb. And if you take this class, whenever you're presented statistics or whenever you need to present statistics, you won't sound dumb. Okay? Now, also, so you won't be taking advantage of it. What do you mean? Well, let's say you're in a meeting, and let's say wherever you work in the next five or six years, and you're in a meeting, and this guy gets up there and he says, you know, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I come up with a 78% confidence level that the average age of the sample is equal to 26, and the average age of the population will be 28. Well, that person is an idiot. Okay? And if you believe that, and if you go out of that meeting and say, well, he said this, and he said this, and she said this, and she said 58, then you're an idiot for believing it. Why? Because what does a 90 to 99 percent confidence level mean? Just read it. 90 to 99 percent what? What's the plural word for confidence? Or what is the singular word? I'm sorry. What is the singular or the root word for confidence? Confident. Confident is the root word. I said I corrected myself. I said the root word for confidence, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an English major. Okay? But what does ninety nine percent confident mean? That you're really, really sure. That you're really sure about the work that you've done. What does this say? I'm lazy and I'm a and I suck. That's what that means. Okay. So if you're sitting in a meeting and they go, I got a 78 percent conference level, you ought to raise your hand and say, What the hell are you doing? Okay. No, I'm serious. Now, there'll be homework problems in chapter nine that's going to ask you for a 78% confidence level. But that's okay because what they're trying to get you to do is learn the procedure. Okay, but when you are in the real world, you want what? Well, Hubert, why didn't you? <laughs> why didn't you put a hundred? Why didn't you put a hundred, Hubert? Why don't you ask for a hundred? Well, unless you walk on water, you're not going to get what? A hundred percent confidence level. Why? Because that would mean you are what? Jesus. Perfect. <laughs> don't say that word. You won't have somebody sue the school. Okay. Okay. Can't have that. All right. So this is what we're doing in Unit Four. Now the first part is to establish this stuff. Okay. And then we're going to move into the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now a lot of people say, "Oh my God, that's awful." No, it's not. It's not really awful because once you learn the basics of it, it's real simple. Because if I say, well, we're not going to get into that right now, but anyway, we're going to learn these three or four things, okay? And we're going to use, well, we're going to use P hat. There's P hat, okay? Point estimate. Write that down. You don't have to write down the whole paragraph. You just write down point estimate. There's another indicator. Guys that look at trucks. They sit there and they stare at their truck and they look at it. That's another indicator. <laughs> it's 
especially if it's a bow tie, which ain't worth it. So I knew, I knew somebody was going to say something. Bow ties are good for riding around town. You know, dating, riding around town, you know. Don't even, don't even try to compare a Chevy to a Dodge. Don't, don't even try. You know you want house in No, I do not. I, 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 I spent a lifetime on the farm. Chevy makes a good dump truck and a big, big truck. They make good big trucks, but. Their pickup trucks can't hang on the farm, at least on our farm. We're kind of rough on stuff. But all right, point estimate is p hat. Remember p hat. It's got a little hat on it. P hat is x over n. Sometimes you'll be given Michelin employees. Employees. 1,500 people at this one place, 15,000. And last week, uh, 2,500 called in sick. Okay? Which one's X? Which one's N? N is always your what? Biggest number. So which one is this? So you would set this one up. P hat is equal to 2,500 over 15,000. And of course that's 25 over 150. 25 over 150. How many times are 25 going to 25? One time. How many quarters are in dollar fifty? Six. So that's equal to 0 0.17. So your P hat is 0 0.17. Now as I told you before, when you're talking about P, what is the complement to P? Yeah. Thank you. You're the one that listens. Okay, what is all, what is the complement P? Q. So what would you think is the complement to P hat? Q. Q what? Q hat. So if P hat is equal to 0.17, Q hat is going to be equal to 0.8 what? Make that note, make sure you understand it because you're going to be doing that a good bit. Same thing we did in chapter 7 with P. They called it in the book 1 minus P, which that is never the case in statistics books. Most statistics books I've seen, and I've seen a lot of them, they always call it Q or Q hat. Okay? Now, what else can they do? They could just say P hat. Here's another example. Let me clear this one. They could just say P hat. is equal to one half. Then you would say P hat is equal to 0.5. Therefore, Q hat is equal to what? 0.5. Here they gave you a fraction. Now the first one we did with the Michelin, they just put it in a sentence. They just said Michelin has 25,000 blah, 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 250 at a rate. Okay? They wrote it in a sentence and you had to put it in the form of what? A fraction. This one was in the form of a fraction. You changed it to a decimal. And then the last one, they could actually give you a decimal. P hat is equal to 0.35. So Q hat is equal to what? 0.65. So those are the three cases that they could give you in a sentence. They can give you a sentence describing an employer and employees. And then you have to put x, x over n, and then turn it into a fraction or turn it into a decimal. The end result is you want a decimal for q hat and you want a decimal for p hat. Capisce? Okay, next. That's pretty simple. Just go ahead and you don't have to write every single word, just write. University poll, 1,783 registered voters were asked about the death penalty for convicted murders. 1,123 were in favor. What is P hat? P hat? <coughs> Oops. Well, there you go. P hat is equal to 0.63. Therefore, Q hat, and I always want you to find Q hat, so when you <coughs> see it in a formula, you won't like freak out. 
is point what? Point three seconds. Okay? People always ask me, what do you think of the death penalty, Hubert? I think all convicted without a reasonable doubt, all convicted should be given the same treatment that they had, that they got convicted for. Simple as that. That's my, and I'm, you know, I'm a heathen, I guess, but that's what I suggest. I guarantee you wouldn't have no daggum people doing stuff. They go, you take an axe to somebody, then they take an axe to you. I saw a video today of this woman at a, a march saying that uh, we need to ban guns and stuff, and that uh, it's wrong that when somebody breaks into your, your house and you shoot them, they shouldn't be shot. Like I said, I've got, I've got a 45, I've got a 44, I've got a 9 mil, I've got a 30-30, I've got all kinds of other stuff, okay? They've been in my house for over, my daughter is 20, my daughter's 21 years old. They've been in my house for over 22 years. I ain't killed nobody. Who kills people? People kill people. Banning guns is going to be about the same thing as banning forks to keep people from getting fat. It ain't gonna happen. All right. What is a competence level? Okay. Now this is where students get messed up. The question will say, find the competence level. The competence level looks like a competence interval. A competence interval looks like this. P hat is greater than, less than, or less than or equal to, whatever. No, it's always gonna be it's not gonna be inclusive. So let me take that equals off. There we go. I'm going to just make one up. 0.48 and 0.52. That is what we call a confidence interval. It's always going to be written like that. So just make a note, example. That's a confidence interval. You find a confidence interval after you find the margin of error, in which we're going to get into all that. We're kind of getting the cart before the horse here, but it's all important. Level of confidence, and that's where we're probably going to stop today because that's where I stopped with the AM class, and that's, I don't want to get into the, I'm going to show you what I want you to do for homework. I want you to get you an index card. And please, let's, let's, not, let's, let's don't reinvent the wheel. Get a small one, get a large one. I don't care. Just get an index card. Steal one from your kids or something, all right, or steal one from somebody you know. And I want you to have it in four columns. Okay, and 10 rows, or 9 rows. 9 rows down, 9 to 10 rows down, and 4 columns that way. Okay, over here you're going to have 91% confidence level, 92, 93, 95, dot, 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 99. Remember I told you a while ago, we're going to be finding 90 to 95, or to 99. Now, the homework will show you 78% confidence level, 85% confidence level. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You just got to do it in your calculator. It's not a big deal. All right, but these are the ones I'm going to ask you on test. Second one is going to be called alpha. You might want to leave a line at the top so that you can, this is confidence level. Okay. You might want to leave a line at the top so you can label. 91% confidence level, alpha is 0 0.09. 92% confidence level, 0 0.08. 93% confidence level, 0 0.07. 95% confidence level, 0 0.05. Dot, dot, dot. 99% confidence level is 0 0.01. Y'all see that? It's a compliment. Everybody see that? And then alpha over 2. Alpha divided by 2. What is 9 cent divided by 2? 0 0.045 cent. What's 8 cent divided by 2? 0 0.04. 
What is, okay, I forgot 90. Dang, I knew I forgot something. 90, that's supposed to be 90. I'm just going to put, let's put 90 down here. 90 is 0 0.10. And what's 10 cent divided by 2? 0 0.05. Make sure you add 90. I forgot 90. 90 to 99. Ma'am? 90 to 99. Okay. What is 7 cent divided by 2? 0 0.035. What's 5 cent divided by 2? 0 0.025. And so on. What's 1 cent divided by 2? 0 0.005. Okay, so you're going to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a the Z score for 0 0.05. Somebody give me, take your take your handy dandy highlighter and let's change these into four digits. If I put four digits, four decimal places, what does that mean these are? I heard four decimal places. What area? Somebody said area. Good job. Four decimal place area. So that means we got to use inverse norm by the z score. Somebody take your handy dandy calculator and do inverse norm of point zero four five zero. Tell me what you get. It's going to give you the negative. We're going to use the positive. What Z score is point zero four five zero inverse norm? Negative I'm sorry, what? Negative one point. Do you want I want it. I want you to give me two or three digits. One point what? One point seven zero. Is it one point seven zero or one point six five something? Six nine five. Six nine five. Use six nine five. That is your Z score. Z sub alpha over 2. Now write that down. Z sub alpha over 2. It's right there in this little subscript. Because that's what you're going to see in your formulas. Okay? You always use the positive because it's to the right. Okay? It's to the right on the right hand side. Okay, so all right, somebody do the other one. Let's do somebody do inverse norm point four zero four zero zero. Give me three decimal points. And do the positive. I don't want the negative. Um, one point seven five one. Okay. And let's do down here point zero zero five zero. What is that one? Somebody did point zero five zero zero. Two point five seven. Two point five seven. And what is point zero five zero zero? Oh, yes. 1.644. Okay, remember, 90 is supposed to be up here. Okay? That's what I want you to do. I want you to fill that out from 90 to 99. It might be best to use a big card. Okay? Unless you just only got to, it's not a big deal, just write it smaller if you got a little card. So put it on some kind of index card. Why? Because on the test, you won't have to type each one of these into your calculator. And just like just like I told y'all to print out the what? The pictures, the, the, the normal curves. Did y'all do it? No. One person did it. Okay. Okay, you did it? Okay, good. I didn't see it. I'm just leaving it out. Okay, well, this is the second thing you need to use on your test. This is the next card. Okay. So make sure you put inverse norm right here on the third column. Inverse norm. And that will give you, and you always take the absolute value, okay? No negatives. Put negative. You don't want a negative. You just want, and you can carry it two or three digits. I don't care, okay? Because you're eventually going to see how they do it in the problems. So, Grande? All right, that's your homework. This is your homework right here. All you got to do is do an index card. Y'all ain't going to do it, but two or three of y'all will. Yeah, exactly. Y'all have a good weekend. Miss Harbin, I'll probably post that tonight. Okay, you'll have to let me know.
I'll post it. I'll take a picture of it and post it. Okay, sounds good. See you. Thank you. Bye. I hope she can see my Facebook page. Yeah, my Facebook page is public anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, I'm